Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, guys, this is Bruce Marshall from Simpler Trading with the nightly market update for Wednesday, March the 1st. Happy March. Happy Wednesday. Um, another kind of midweek shuffle day here with, as you can see, this is the ES. And as you can see, let me zoom in a little bit here, you know, a lot of more of the same so we opened up here we ripped straight up we came into our voodoo fire line there we failed came all the way down kind of stopped out here in the middle of nowhere uh, bounced a little bit failed off the skyline came down skyline held bounced you know straight up straight down snow line held straight up chop 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 and then kind of down all day <clears throat> um and I actually put a little butterfly trade, a little bitty tiny one down here uh, for the end of the day, thinking that we would come down here. And it, I actually, I put it on probably about here. And it was it was pretty profitable here, um, percentage-wise. It was a small trade anyway. But uh, but I was like, man, this is going to be great. And then, of course, we start rallying up here. And then we looked to come back down here. And I was thinking, I wonder if we're going to fall that much during the end of the day. And I did not think we would. Uh, but the trade, like literally, I think we risk 140 bucks, and if we would have ended down here, it was worth 850. Um, so it was a pretty good risk reward. Didn't work, but um, but it was close. <laughs> so anyway, that's you know that's the lotto ticket. That's the end of the day trade. You guys have probably seen about the they call them the zero DTE trade. It's a zero days to expiration trade. So when the SPX went to everyday expiration, um, now we can do these end of the day trades every day. And the, the benefit of doing a trade like that is that there is no theta built into the trade uh, or it, it, it goes out of the trade, the pricing of the option, the theta goes out uh, on the last day that the option, you know, when the option expires. And what that means is you're getting basically a wholesale price on the option versus a retail price. There's no time value left on the option because there's no time left on it. Um, so it makes it, you get a lot more leverage. It makes it much more um, uh, cost effective. And, you know, quite frankly, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of, uh, I don't want to say entertaining because it's not for entertainment, but it makes it a whole lot easier that you don't have to wait you know, a week or two or something like that. You only have to wait two, three hours, maybe something like that. So anyway, those, you know, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. We've made a lot of money over those in the last, probably in the last year. Um, lately, it's kind of been hit or miss just because of this back and forth stuff. And we keep seeing this same stuff over and over and over. And it's very frustrating. Let's look and I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is a five day chart. So, I mean, look at that. That looks like, you know, um, just something you know some something crazy uh again straight up straight down straight up straight down straight up straight down just you know it's just impossible to get on the right side of this thing for long i mean you know the trend i guess is ultimately down but if you're short you're going to get your head ripped off many many times on these you know sharp reversals on the way up so it makes it very very again very very challenging uh let me show you let's go out to a 20 day chart and again, up here, 20 days, and this is in the ES, we go from 4,200 all the way down to 3,943. So, you know, again, it is um, it is drifting down here. I, I do kind of feel like we're at a, a good place for a potential reversal and maybe a pop higher. But think about this. You always have to look ahead and see what might make that happen. And... Let me show you. So we've got today's March 1st. Uh, we've got on the 14th, we've got CPI, uh, which is the inflation uh, indicator that the Fed will watch. We've got PPI, which is another inflation um, indicator that they'll watch. And then on the 22nd, uh, we've got the actual Fed meeting. So I don't know what's going to happen in the next week, um, but this week here, with the you know the 14th 15th that'll be an exciting week there'll be a lot of volatility um, and then of course the Fed meetings on the 22nd now that can change the trajectory you know pretty dramatically of the overall market and let me show you what I'm talking about here uh, because we're really let me put my 
well let me put let me put my wave and grab candles here so you know this will give you a little bit better idea of the market um, so we're at a point these lines here are 34 EMAs and we're at a point here where we could bounce and resume this perhaps uh, or break and resume you know these downtrends um, and I don't know I don't know which way we'll go I think we bounce first and then do that is what I honestly think will happen uh, but you know who knows this market is so tough to read it's been very 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 tough and I'm usually pretty good about reading the market uh, but right now with the way it is and you know big big um, data points coming out you know it's just really tough now let me show you this this is from the that's the first of the year you see that little white line you can barely see it right there that's January 1st or you can see it right there it says 2023 and we've had a nice rally up I think it was about I don't know seven percent six percent something like that and then we gave back about two in February and the big question is where do we go in March do we come back up here or do we go down here you know and again I don't know um, the Fed did come out you know the Fed presidents and Fed speakers um, have been doing a lot of talking and been saying that they're open to more um, rate hikes or maybe even more aggressive rate hikes not good for the market you know and so again will we get a 25 basis point hike at the next fed meeting on the 22nd or we get a 50 basis point and you know nobody knows so uh, if you're trading this obviously just the way we've been doing it for a while it's working you know i'm trading shorter time frames um i'm trading the spx a lot and kind of mostly honestly um and i'm trading kind of weekly stuff i'm going out three four five days to ten days maybe you know twenty days out um, and I'm taking small profits when I can and just getting out and you know looking for more opportunities I don't have near the number of trades on that I typically have um, but it's it's working well and that's kinda of the way you have to trade it in this market so um, you know be careful out there we do have payrolls coming up here uh, as well but you know be careful keep your size small risk a little to try to make a lot that's the way to do it in this market or at least have a, a reasonable risk reward when you when you put trades on um, and of course if you want to see how we do this real time join me in the main room at simpler trading uh, join me in the bias room I'm in there every day and uh, we're you know we're trading this thing and again it's working it's working well we're doing fine this year so far but um, this markets tricky so be careful out there so with that, let me wind it up. Hope that makes sense. Hope it helps. And I'll see you guys at the next update. Thanks. Take care. Without simpler trading, I could not have financial independence. This is one of the best investments I ever made in my life. It's helping me find consistency. It's one of the things that won me 